fine day on the Bible Track Echoes radio broadcast. I have the privilege of once again talking to, fellowshipping with Shahid Kaleem. Our ministry, Bible Tracks Incorporated, has printed millions upon millions of gospel tracks, gospel literature in Pakistan. We've been so blessed to see thousands of people saved and baptized. Now, understand, it's a difficult country. You need to look no further than to listen to the broadcast from yesterday as Brother Kaleem brought to us a testimony, a story of a man, 60-something years old, who understood his need for a Savior, meaning Christ, and through his salvation was somewhat disowned, lost a job, lost his family, yet still was pleased, still was happy to be in the service of the true king. And I'm happy today for Shahid Kaleem to tell you a little bit of his testimony. We've heard about the ministry to some degree, and at the conclusion of the broadcast, he's actually going to expound for us on the persecution and the difficulty of serving God in that country. But understand this, this man of God that speaks to you now He needs your support, needs your prayer support. The ministry that we undertake to print and distribute gospel tracts, it only happens because of the grace of God and the giving of God's generous people. And I don't just mean through money. It's the prayers of God's people that allow this ministry to continue. And so if you would, take a few moments and listen to this testimony from Shahid Kaleem of how God led him to a saving knowledge of his son. I am the native of third big city of Pakistan. Uh, my parents were not preachers or ministers. My parents obligated me, obligated me to go to the church, but I doubted everything. I believe in science more than God. In 1997, I was in the college. In our class, just two students were belongs to Christian families. Even I belonged to a Christian family, I had very little knowledge about the Bible. There is a trend amongst the Muslims in Pakistan that when they will know that you belongs to a Christian family, then they immediately will try to engage you with some, uh, with so many questions. So many of my classmates starts asking me different questions about the Bible and always try to convince me to Islam and that our Bible is not the word of God and asks me how God have a son unless he had a wife. Some asked me about the crucifixion and said that Jesus was not crucified on the cross. Instead, Judas Iscariot was crucified and Allah raised Jesus to himself. I had nothing to do with all those questions because I was not interested in the religion. When they asked me again and again, I told to my parents that I am not going to college anymore. My parents asked me the reason. They convinced me and advised me that don't think much about what they are saying. Just concentrate on your study. And advised me also no need to talk on religion religion with those boys because they know it could be dangerous while you are in Pakistan. So they afraid. I was very depressed. I doubted everything, even in the existence of God. Every morning at 7.40 a.m., before leaving, my dad pray for me to God, that heavenly father, cover him with the blood of Jesus, protect him from all evil, and fulfill your purpose in his life. In the mid-1998, uh, the world was not looking so good to me. To me, the world was uh, the uh, the world was finished, dead, dry, obnoxious, and bleak. Nothing really had any value anymore. The world was an enormous valley of dry bones, just like the one Ezekiel saw, Ezekiel saw in the Vian. Then the time came, and the moment that hit me. One day, I was in the college, and one of our brilliant qualified, trained physics professor. He came uh, along 
and reveals a mathematical equation that is explained the probability of randomness in the universe. He basically explained that how we are require more faith to believe that we are not here randomly. And he was not talking about God or Christ. Then he explained mathematically how it is almost toward infinity, expeditional, expeditional, uh, the idea that we can't be here by chance, how the universe can exist away and all dynamics. At that moment, it hit me that God is real. I asked myself, is God real? And then the re reality of Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, enlightened my life. And I did not, uh, and I did not come to Jesus in a church service or conference. It is very great, but it was through science and physics. And then I finally started reading the Bible and the Spirit of the Lord convinced me and I found the plan of salvation in it and the instructions for eternal life which told how to grow up in Christ and spiritually become a soul winner for him. It was wonderful to know that God was real and alive and everything that prophets and apostles said he was. I knew immediately that I would always fear, admire, respect, love and serve him. When I first started reading the Bible, I felt that all the depression and burden went away and I was feeling peace. Something very wonderful had happened to me by Christ Jesus, the Holy One of Israel. I was so happy to be free from sin and the possession that this power which kept me from sinning that I wanted to tell others so they could also know him and have eternal life. The word of God gave me the power to stand and quench all the fiery darts Satan firing against me. And now I know that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus and we are complete in him. And I also know how very important it is to follow every word of Jesus who said moments before his ascension into heaven in a cloud, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature who those who are spiritually dead so they may hear the word of the Lord and he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that believeth not shall be damned. Let me ask you this my friend do you know Jesus Christ as your personal savior like Shahid Kaleem does like the men and women that we've heard about over the last few days that have accepted the fact that they cannot attain heaven on their own. You see, good works, praying even five times a day, none of those things will ultimately result in you gaining access to heaven. You must know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. At the conclusion of the program, the announcer will tell you all about how you can contact us, and we would love for you to take advantage of that. Visit our website now, BibleTracksInc.org, for more information. At this time, I'm going to turn the microphone back over to Shahid Kaleem to tell us about the persecution, the difficulty of serving God in Pakistan. For question in regard of persecution and difficulties in our gospel work in Pakistan, even there are difficult circumstances in Pakistan, but praise the Lord that we know that it will happen. Our Lord told us 2,000 years ago, all these things will happen. Jesus said in John uh, chapter 15, verse 18, If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. 
uh, in Matthew chapter 5 verse 10 to 12 blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake for there is the kingdom of heaven blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you because we learn in light sometimes we have to go through to get to joseph biblical example would be joseph went through the pit to get to the palace the israelites went through the desert to get to promised land the hebrew boys went through the fire to get to the king's court jesus went to the uh, went to the cross to get to rise again so you and i can be here today we know the good news the gospel the great news with god in christ you will overcome and how i can be so certain it's just the matter of biblical due diligence did joseph stay in the pit did the israelites stay in the desert did the hebrew boys stay in the furnace did jesus stay in the tomb not at all that's the great news we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony we know that jesus gave us an identity that we are not google we are not microsoft we are not ford and we are not even starbucks we are the church of jesus christ and the gates of hell shall not prevail against us aren't you glad that we serve a mighty god a god that can take care of us as i mentioned a few moments ago if you don't know the god that we serve if you don't know jesus christ as your personal lord and savior i'd love to talk to you about it. I've been notified by multiple people. They've actually texted me directly to let me know that because of this radio program, they've accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. And friend, if you have not done so, or maybe you just have questions about that important decision, I'd love for you to reach out to me. You can text me directly, 309-316-7240, 309 316 3167240 it would be a great honor and privilege it would be my pleasure to talk to you from the bible you don't need my opinion friends you need the bible now over the coming days the next few days we will visit with shahid kaleem and i'm excited to talk to him a little bit more but we are going to turn back to our bible study tomorrow lord willing we are going to discuss a touchy subject stewardship we're going to talk about tithing and giving. What does the Bible have to say about money? Let's talk about it. Thanks so much for listening. God bless.